Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to be solving some multi-step number stories. We are in our home links, Unit 8, Lesson 1. And today, when it says multi-step, that might mean that you might be asked to do more than one type of mathematic operation, like add and multiply, or subtract and divide, etc., etc. Let's read the premise of these multi-step number stories. It says, fourth grade students in Mr. Kennedy's class are investigating energy and motion. Students worked in teams to build two machines, a car that is propelled by a mousetrap and a boat that is propelled by balloons. Today, the teams are competing to see which cars and boats go farthest. Each car or boat gets three trials. The total distance from all three trials is used to determine which car or boat went farthest. Solve the number of stories to help Mr. Kennedy's class compare the machines made by various teams. So, of course, when I'm tackling story problems, I'm going to utilize the ruckus strategy, which is going to tell me to reread portions of the text, uh, circle important information, underline the questions, and come up with action plans before I can solve it. Okay? And the explanation to the story problems gives us some information we might want to circle. Each car or boat gets three trials. Total distance is used to determine which boat went the farthest. Okay? So we are looking at three distance trials. Okay? So let's look at problem number one. It says... Team A's car went 173 centimeters on the first trial, 206 centimeters on the second trial, and 245 centimeters on the third trial. Team B's car went 217 centimeters on each of the three trials. Which car went the farthest overall? How much farther did it go? So Team A, I'm going to use some green. 173, 206, and 245 centimeters. Team B's car, which I'll use in red, went 217 centimeters each of the three trials. That's some consistent results right there. So how do I figure out which car went farthest? Well, for Team A, I need to do some addition, okay, because I got three different results. So I need to set up an addition problem. So I'm going to add 173 to 206 and I'm going to add that to 245. Like so. Did I get all those numbers right? Yes, I did. Alright, so since I lined up my numbers in place value order, I just go down each column. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. I'm going to carry that 10. 10 plus 7 and 70 is 80. 80 plus 40 is 120. So I'm going to put the 2 down here, carry that 100. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. So the total here is 624 centimeters. So that's Team A's car. Now we got to compare. Team B's car went 217 centimeters on each of the three trials. So here, rather than add, I'm going to use some multiplication. Now you could add it by taking the same number and adding it three times. But that's what multiplication is. It's repeated addition. So I can save myself some work by just creating a multiplication problem. And I'm going to use partial products to help me solve this problem. So I'm going to multiply each part by 3. 200 by 3, 10 times 3, 7 by 3. Okay. And as you can see, I get a total, when I add my partial products together, of 651 centimeters, which is bigger than 624 centimeters. So the question, which car went farther, farthest overall? Well, that would be Team B. Then the question becomes, how much farther did it go? Okay, How much farther, that's a clue that tells me, oh, I need to compare 
a.k.a. subtract one number from the next. I need to subtract 651 minus 624. So if I set this up as a subtraction problem here, I can see that I need to borrow from the tens because I don't have enough ones because I can't take four from one. But I can take four from 11 when I take one ten and leave four tens. So now I can subtract. 11 minus 4 is 7, 4 minus 2 is 2, and then 6 minus 6 is 0. So the difference is 27 centimeters. Okay, how much farther did it go? 27 centimeters. So with this one problem, we had to add, we had to multiply, and we had to subtract. Multiple steps, multiple operations. That's kind of like life. There are multiple steps in just about everything that we do, and each step might require us to do something different than the last step. Okay, It helps us understand that in multi-step problems, each step is important. Okay, Now, each step of this problem was fairly easy because we've had practice in adding three add-ins before. We've had practice in multiplying three-digit numbers before. We've obviously subtracted before. So it's not that each step is difficult, it's just that A, we need to know that there's more than one step to do, and B, we have to do each step correctly, however easy each step is. Okay. Now I'm going to let you guys take care of problems two and three. I'm using the Boy Scout edge method on teaching here. I explained what you need to do and I demonstrated. Now I'm going to step back and let you try these problems on your own. Okay, but let's, for the fun of it, tackle one of these division problems here at the bottom. Uh, it's getting interesting. These are four-digit dividends, so that means I'm going to use the long division method multiple times. Okay, I think I'm going to try problem number five. Okay, now I know that six and seven definitely are going to give me remainders because four is an even number and 9,207 is odd, so chances are there's going to be uh, a remainder. Same with 3,578 divided by 5. If it doesn't end in 5 or 0, I know I'm going to have a remainder. But I'm not 100% sure with this one quite yet. Okay, 8,500 divided by 3. It might give us a remainder, it might not. There's only one way to find out. So I'm going to write 8,500. I'm going to put it under that vinculum the house, and I'm going to put 3 as my divisor, and I'm going to go through that process of dividing, multiplying, subtracting, bringing down, checking and repeating, or finding a remainder. So let's divide. 3 can go into 8 2 times, because 2 times 3 is 6. If I subtract the difference, I'm left with 2, but when I bring down the 5, that gives me 25, 25 groups of 100. I can divide that by 3, so I'm going to repeat the process. 3 can go into 25 8 times. 8 times 3 is 24. That leaves me a difference of 1. So now I can bring down the 0. That leaves me with 10. 10 again is bigger than my divisor. So now I have to repeat the process once again. I'm going to divide 10 by 3, which gives me 3 groups, because 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract the difference. Oh, I'm left with 1. And when I bring down that 0, I'm repeating the same process. So I know how this is going to go. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract. But now I have nothing else to bring down. So this 1 becomes a remainder. Now I could represent this in one of two ways. I can say 2,833 is my quotient with a remainder of 1. Or I could say 2,833 and one-third. Either way is correct. Okay, So I did have a remainder. We'll say remainder one right here. And that's pretty much it. The division is review. It's just that they're giving you larger numbers to divide. But if you know the process, you can do it. You just have to take multiple steps to get to that quotient. Do you have questions? 
Well, I would answer them for you if I could, but uh, I'm a recording that you are probably watching on YouTube right now. Uh, so that means you need to find yourself a real, live, living, breathing person to talk to. You know, like your math teacher. If your math teacher is available, you should ask them a question or questions. Hey, that's what they're there for, to help you. And if you need help, you need to let them know that you need help. Okay? I hope this video was helpful in some respects. And until we talk again, friends, have a good day and good luck. Thanks.